G'day, it's Greg Newson here, naturopathic doctor. Now I just thought I'd put this second video together on polluria, mainly because since we've done the first video, things have changed a little bit and um, there's some additional information, so I thought I'd just share that with everybody. Now the information on the first video is still quite relevant, this is just some additional stuff. Now the first thing that I suppose I have to um, comment on is my pronunciation of the word polluria. I initially called it pyrolurea. Now, in my defence, I when we did the videos, there was no real um, other videos around. There was a lot of written words, and I would have just gone through the the written words and and, and spelt it phonetically or pronounced it phonetically. I would have gone pyrolurea. Now that's my defence, and I'm sticking to it. But um, I've since learned that it is polluria, and uh, so I apologise if I've confused anybody. But same name. Um, different names, same, same condition. So what, what I've noticed over the years in, in treating people with polluria is that where it is believed to be a genetic disorder, what we've found is that between 55 to 60 to 70 percent of people that suffer from polluria actually suffer from a condition called lifestyle generated polluria, which means that there's underlying factors or triggers that initiate or worsen polluria. Now, if you don't fix up these triggers, you will never fix up polluria, which means that the poor sufferer has to take the zinc and the B6 and the high doses and the biotin and all that for, for, for a very, very long time and they may not get better. They take the nutritional supplements and they go, well, I've taken them for a month and I don't feel any different. Why is that? That's because the initial triggers, the initial factors, the initial causes have not been rectified. And that is one of the most important things that needs to be done in any polyuria treatment. So if your treatment is, oh, here you go. If, if your practitioner says, here you go, you're gonna take zinc and B6 and yeah, you're gonna take that for your life, find someone else because they don't know what they're talking about. It's as simple as that. Now. I've told you that there's triggers, but I haven't told you what they are. So there's some, there's some really basic fundamental things. And the first one is diet. If you eat a poor diet, you are going to um, cause what we call oxidative stress. So it means that the, the cells are going to be damaged. Um, antioxidants are things that are found in foods, and they protect your cells. And if we've mentioned previously, the elevated HPL levels is a marker of oxidative stress. So rusting, damage to the cells. So diet plays a major role. So if your diet is a diet that consists of a lot of plastic cheese hamburgers or cola drinks or it's a lot of white flour products or pre-packaged pre, pre microwave meals or takeaway fish and chips or something like that, you're not giving the body the nutrients that it needs to live and grow and be healthy, right? And that is one of the major causes of elevated HPLs, right? So it's always, it's a very easy way to start uh, to, to, to rectify H, uh, to rectify polyuria. So start improving the diet, fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and legumes and pulse and beans and cows, chickens and eggs, oysters and prawns and all that sort of stuff. Really, really, really important. Um, the other thing that, another trigger is stress. So if you're in a stressful situation, you've got family pressures, work pressures, you've got poor diet, stress from the poor diet, you've got digestive stress, you've got too hot, too cold, violent movies, not enough sleep, all of these things, they stress the body. Another driver of um, polyuria. So we've got to look at ways to manage our stress. Other things that will contribute to or cause polyuria is if you've got poor digestion. So if, and, and, and poor digestion means leaky gut syndrome. Dysbiosis, which means too many bad guys and not enough good guys in the gut. So, you know, the, the probiotic type things that you see the advertised for, more probiotics, you, you've got less probiotic -y stuff and more bad bacteria and parasites and worms, etc. So that needs to be rectified. So if you get bloating or gas or diarrhea or your stool doesn't look like a, a ripe, firm banana, if it's anything else but that, you've got digestive problems. Um, if your stool's a different colour, you've got digestive problems. If your stool smells, you've got digestive problems. If you've got abdominal pain, you've got digestive problems. If you bloat when you eat certain food, you've got digestive problems. If you eat on the run, which means that you think, oh, okay, I'll grab a sandwich, I'll, I'll run out and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll do this job and then I'll, and then I'll um, oh, I've got to go see the kids and I've got to do this and I'll rush in here, rush in there, rush in there. You've got poor digestion. Your stress will worsen your digestive system. So it's a bit of a catch-22 there. Your body needs to be relaxed when you're eating food. Very, very important to get that whole digestive system going, going effectively. Chemical exposure 
is another leading cause of um, toxins in the body, obviously, and that will drive up HPL levels, as will heavy metals um, toxicity. So if you've got any of those things or are exposed to any of those, they need to be rectified with the dosages of the zinc and the B6. Now, if you don't rectify any of those, if you don't improve the diet, if you don't reduce the stress, if you don't fix leaky gut, if you don't fix up digestive system, poor digestive system, you will never, ever, 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 ever get rid of pyluria and you will always be on some sort of nutritional supplement and you'll always feel terrible, right? It's, now, if you're a, someone that's suffering from a joint genetic, so it's in the family and yes, everyone's got it, you're, and, and you've got these issues, they still need to be rectified because they're gonna make pyluria worse. Now, how do you know if you've got lifestyle or genetic pyluria? You don't, you don't. You get tested, yes, I'm positive. Okay, I'm tested, I'm positive, I'll take the supplements. There's an improvement, that's great. No improvement, um, okay, I've got to look at other things. If there's an improvement, you still have to look at digestion or go test for leaky gut or improve the diet or manage the stress. You've got to fix those things up even if you're starting to improve because you want to get off the supplements. You don't want to be on them for life. Now, if you've still got you still improve all the stress and the digestion and the leaky gut and all that sort of stuff and, and, and you've still got your test and your levels are up here and then now they're, they're here but they're still positive, there's a very good chance it's genetic. But if you're up here, you fix up all those underlying factors and then it's down here and you're negative, hey, your lifestyle generated. And I have found more patients lifestyle gen with lifestyle generated polyuria than I have with genetic. Even people that have the brother and the uncle and the aunt and the grandparent that has pyluria and they get tested once they fix up once we fix up these underlying issues they they get tested again and they're negative so <laughs> it's really important you don't want to take a multivitamin or a, a zinc and a b6 for the rest of your life the body wasn't designed to do that some people yes you're going to have to but you can take a reduced reduced dose if you fix up these underlying issues and improving digestion means you get more nutrients in through the the digestive tract anyway so there's a lot more information on this in an ebook that we've got on, a, on Conquering Polaria, the website Conquering Polaria. So if you want more information on that, um, by all means, just go there and um, download that. So the, the other thing that I'd like to talk about is gamma linoleic acid. Now, a lot of people dismiss gamma linoleic acid as essential for uh, polaria sufferers because your body can make it. And, and it is true, your body can make this substance called gamma linoleic acid. Um, gamma linoleic acid is converted to arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid tests have shown people in a, in, with pyluria have lower levels of arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid is essential for proper brain development and function, for immune function, for healthy sperm, for healthy skin. It surrounds the layer of every, it makes up a component of the layer in every, around, that surrounds every single cell in your body. So it keeps that cell healthy. Um, it's so, it, too much of it, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Uh, so too much of arachidonic acid will be a driver of inflammation. But we know that arachidonic acid is low in polaria sufferers. So we then got to go back upstream. Back upstream from arachidonic acid is gamma linoleic acid. Back up from that is linolenic acid, which is a, a, fat, a, a fat that is found in nuts and seeds and vegetable oils and nut oils and seed oils and that sort of stuff. So your body then converts that oil, that, that linolenic acid to gamma linoleic acid, GLA. But to do that, there's an enzyme. Now this might be a bit, I'm trying not to get too technical, but to do that, there's an enzyme called delta-6 desaturase, okay? Now, for delta-6 desaturase to function, to do its job, guess what it needs? Zinc, B6, and magnesium. Now, if you're low in one or all of those, that enzyme don't work. Now, what is a pyluria sufferer low in? <laughs> do I need to say it? Zinc and B6, right? So we know that enzyme's not working effectively. And we know that a lot of enzymes aren't working effectively because a lot of them are dependent on B6 and to a lesser degree zinc. So um, very important to supplement with gamma linoleic acid initially, right? And good sources that are bori seed oil, hemp seed oil, evening primrose oil, um, black currant, red currant seed oil as well. So important thing to do. So hopefully that's given you some additional information on some of the potential underlying causes of pyluria and a bit more information on the importance of gamma linoleic acid. So if you test positive for pyluria and you go to your healthcare provider or professional and they say, here you go, 
here's some zinc and B6. Look, that's important and you've got to take that stuff because the elevated HPLs, the hydroxyl hemperolins, is lowering or re restricting the amount of zinc and B6 that your body can, can utilise. So it is important, and biotin and gamma-linic acid. But if that's all they do, you've got to find someone else. You've got to find someone that will look at the potential underlying causes and, and treat those along with um, the nutritional supplements. And so hopefully after a couple of months, you retest again and you find that polyuria is gone and you don't need the nutritional supplements, but you've made some major improvements in lifestyle changes that have not only helped with polyuria, but helped with a whole heap of other areas of your health now, but prevented a whole heap of other potential issues in the future. So really, really important. So if you'd like any more information on polyuria, go to our website, conqueringpolyuria.com and you'll find that there's a whole heap of um, information there. There's free PDFs on, on foods and health conditions. There's um, information on, there's videos, there's audio downloads. There's um, lots of blog posts and articles for you to read as well on different aspects of polyuria. So um, if you like this video, please let us know and please comment. And if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, we'd appreciate it. So this is Greg. Hope this, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.